Hi, my name is Dehrat. I'll be discussing our recently proposed method for learning-based system size adaptation in hearing aid, where we looked at how we can benefit from training the model directly within the closed loop as opposed to open loop training. One of the biggest challenges with hearing aid is the acoustic coupling between the receiver and the microphone input, as you can see with the dashed line in the right figure. This can lead to feedback and reduced sound quality, which is typically heard as a beep sound in the hearing aid. And the well-known solution involves implementing an adaptive filter that estimates the acoustic path and cancels out the feedback component in the microphone input. The right-hand side diagram shows a schematic of the closed loop system. The feedback component is generated by convolving the output or the receiver signal with the feedback path. And at the same time, the adaptive filter is estimating the feedback um, path using a gradient descent update to minimize the error. So the update looks like a step size mu times a constraint version of the gradient. And there's this famous trade-off between the step size and convergence accuracy, which states that small step sizes may not adapt to changes while large step sizes converge faster, but with poor accuracy. To have a better understanding, let's consider this audio example. Um, I'll play the input first and then the output with a conventional um, adaptive filter. And even the dark, thoughtful eye of Cora peeked at her remark, but I know that your safety in that of Cora is far dearer to me than could be any orchestra. That was the input, now output. Dark, thoughtful eye of Cora peeked at her remark, but I know that your safety in Cora is far dearer to me than could be any orchestra. As you notice, in the beginning, we have a beep, and also in the middle of the sequence, after the feed feedback change, we also have another beep. Um, the ideal adaptive filter is going to remove both of them as the convergence time is going to be really fast. Our approach leverages the power of data-driven methods, or in, in, in this specific case, neural networks, to automatically learn this trade-off, which eliminates, to, uh, which eliminates the, our need to basically tune the hyperparameters of the uh, utilized adaptive filter. Various works utilize a DNN to learn the step size for open loop applications, such as acoustic echo cancellation, which is um, proposed in this paper from ICAS 2022. Um, in the figure, you see the conventional methods with um, dashed lines, while the DNN, the proposed DNN method, is represented by solid line. And as you can see, the performance of, the performance of adaptive filter is enhanced in several factors. However, the hearing aid is working within the closed loop. So the question that we're trying to um, answer here is, is it more beneficial for us to train the model in the closed loop, which means is it better to consider the coupling between the input output at the time of training or not? It turns out that training the model within the closed loop can outperform um, basically the open loop training. Um, in open loop systems, the point is that the data can be generated all at once and the adaptive filter can be updated offline. To elaborate, let's take a look at this animation where the goal is to generate the reference sequence, uh, which I showed you by blue, um, and it is, consistent, it is consistent of two data frames. For that, one can ignore the adaptive filter completely, generate the data by convolving the input sequence, the yellow one, uh, again, two blocks, uh, with the echo path. And once the data is generated, we can start updating the filter. On the other hand, for the closed loop, the story is a bit different. The data generation and the adaptive filter update must be done simultaneously. That's why we call it online training. In other words, in this method, we obtain the receiver sequence block by block, as opposed to the um, open loop training, where we could forget about the adaptive filter and generate the whole sequence. Um, that's basically the difference in open loop and closed loop training. To evaluate what's the benefit of training in the closed loop, we use 10 hours of speech and 280 different measured feedback paths to compare our closed loop training with open loop and state of the art Kalman filtering and um, NLMS. For the metrics, we use misalignment, which is a measure of basically relative error of the adaptive filter, and ASG, which shows how much additional gain we can provide in the hearing aid um, given the uh, when we utilize the adaptive filter. Uh, on the right slide, on the right slide, I'm showing the average results. Um, for different choices of um, you know, feedback path change uh, from second four to six. Um, in the top plot, I'm showing the NASD misalignment and the bottom one ASD. And as you can see, the red curve, which is representative of neural AFC, is outperforming all other methods in terms of convergence rate and um, accuracy. Uh, again, let's get back to the audio example. Um, so the input. And even the dark thoughtful eye of Cora peeked at her remark, but I know that your safety in that of Cora is far dearer to me than could be any orchestra. And the output. Of Cora 
piqued at her remark, but I know that your safety in that of Cora is far dearer to me than could be any orchestra. As you notice, the second beat in the middle is completely eliminated, even though the feedback path is um, changing. To conclude my presentation, I talked about an approach which we call the neural AFC, which is used for adaptive feedback cancellation trained specifically within the closed loop. Um, we, uh, we've seen that utilizing data-driven methods for step size adaptation outperform conventional um, adaptive filters such as Kalman filter and normalized Lisa square. More importantly, uh, we see, we've seen that training online within the closed loop is going to enhance the performance rather than training the model offline or within the open loop. Thanks.